Hello, I'm Rob Forsyth. Welcome to Liberalism in Question. In this half-hour podcast from the Centre for Independent Studies, we explore questions and challenges to liberalism today. My guest is Dr. Michael Spence, the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Sydney. Michael, welcome. Good to be here, Rob. How do you understand liberalism? What do you take it to be? That's a, um, a, a, a question either easy or very difficult indeed. But I suppose I take it as um, a, a system of government that fundamentally respects the interests of the individual over the interests of the um, collective and is keen to guard and protect um, uh, uh, individual autonomy um, uh, in, in ways that other systems are more willing to see them compromised. Primarily for you, a system of government. Yeah, I think it is primarily a system of government, mm-hmm. a, a system of social organisation. Yeah. Can I ask you whether you are you believe in such things or you think it's not a good idea? Like all systems of social organisation, it has great advantages and also it's great um, disadvantages. But on the whole, I think it's better than the alternatives. Have you always thought that? Yes, I think so. I think... Um, uh, uh, I've always thought that the freedoms that we enjoy in a country like Australia are not to be taken for granted, um, that they are um, easily lost um, and that guarding our liberal tradition is something that is a, really in one way or another a, a duty of every member of the political community. What I often ask the question is, is it to be preferred because it works better or is there somehow a deeper moral commitment to it? Or is it just proven to be the best way to do things in a pragmatic sense? So I find that um, a really interesting question. You know, I, I have a Christian faith and um, as a consequence, I um, think that every individual matters, that every individual is a moral agent, that every individual um, uh, uh, has a capacity to choose that should be reflected, uh, respected and um, ought to be given the opportunity as much as is possible to pursue their own conception of the good. On the other hand, I also have a Christian faith and think that um, the great idolatry is self-worship and that um, uh, an obsession with my rights as an individual um, can really be problematic socially. And so, uh, yes, I think that there is a um, deeper moral value in the liberal vision, but I think that there are also ways of articulating alternative um, uh, 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 alternative patterns of social organisation that also have moral weight. So it's not just the only way. There are, you think there are other valid ways of organising society? No, but other better ways, Miss. Um, your line, Rob, I think that you say there's other valid ways, or is that what you said? Okay, <laughs> not better ways. <laughs> I think there are other valid ways of things. Yeah. Um, you said, Michael, you said to me that um, you think it has advantages and disadvantages. Do you want to just, can you enumerate firstly the advantages that, as you see it? So I think it has all sorts of values. I think that we've seen that um, liberal societies, because they release the creative potential of individuals, um, can be enormously dynamic, both um, socially and economically. Um, they can be uh, uh, both, both productive um, economically, but also very fruitful and rich um, societies. Um, I, I think the disadvantage is precisely the opposite. When the um, legitimate interests of the collective are um, overlooked, or when um, the, um, uh, uh, um, the 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 sorts of problems that can only be adequately addressed through good coordination are uh, not sufficiently addressed because of our commitment to individual autonomy. In fact, I've just been reading um, a very fascinating piece by David Brooks about America for coming apart effectively because of what he calls the, the, the massive collapse of social trust mm. without which society cannot work, mm. which implies that I think, you, I think you need, more the... than just, you need more than just individuals for individualism to work. Exactly. Um, And I think one of the interesting um, questions in the future of of liberalism is liberalism has, of course, traditionally worked in Western societies with 
strong sets of shared values between individuals as a background against which individuals have, have played and made choices. And as those strong sets of shared values in one way or another break down or shift, um, there's a there's a real tension in the system. And the question is whether or not the system can handle those things. Now, I think it can. And we've seen significant periods in the past when there have been um, major value shifts and liberalism has de- identified its ability to, ha- has demonstrated its ability to adapt. But I think um, uh, uh, some, some of the value shifts that we're seeing at the moment are really quite tectonic. And um, uh, it, it will be an interesting couple of decades ahead. What, do, what have you got in mind when you say that? Um, uh, precisely um, uh, uh, shifts in understandings about um, uh, uh, human flourishing, about um, what it means to live a good life, um, about what our duties as well as our freedoms might be, about what our responsibilities to other people might be. Um, I think all of these things are um are more up for debate than they've been in a little while. I'm Rob Forsyth, and this is a Liberalism in Question. My guest today is Dr. Michael Spence, the Vice Chancellor of University of Sydney. Um, Michael, I was I was thinking, being a Vice Chancellor of University, you see life at slightly more intensely in terms of cultural changes and challenges, and mm-hmm. therefore see the sense that university is both a place in which liberalism is some level challenged as well as supported. Can you want to reflect upon your time uh, at the at, at at university in, in a senior leadership position? Yeah, sure. So I I think there is uh, I am deeply committed to um, Ron Dawkin, Ronald Dawkins' vision of the university as a crucial institution in the liberal community that um, it, that that prepares and demonstrates liberal values. In particular, is what he calls a theatre for the exercise of the independence of the mind. Um, And I think that that has a number of consequences for um, the university as an institution. Um, The first is, I think, that the university um, is a forum for debate. It should be a place that facilitates conversation. It should be a place um, that leaves its staff and students free to get on and explore and express ideas. it's not an advocate in debate. And that sometimes frustrates both the left and the right um, who want the university to come out and um, condemn this or advocate this or whatever it might be. And I don't think that's the role of the university. I think it is the role of staff and students at the university. But I think lest the university as an institution has a chilling effect on debate, it's really important that the institution acts as a forum. So, you know, to give you an example, we talk a certain amount of flack because unlike many corporations and the um, uh, and, and some universities, we didn't as an institution come out and um, express an opinion on the same-sex sex marriage referendum. Um, and that wasn't um, because we don't um, support our LGBTIQ staff and students and it um, wasn't because... Uh, It was an issue about which people did not hold passionate views at the university. On the contrary, it was because it was an issue about which people did hold passionate (laughs) views about the uh, the university. And we wanted our staff and students to be able to engage in conversation both here and publicly about that issue, about the meaning of marriage effectively, without there being the chilling effect of the university adopting a corporate position. So. didn't all hold the same passionate views at the university. Um, yeah, well, I think it would be fair to say that there was a dominant passionate view yes. at the university, but there were some people that held alternative views, and we wanted um, this to be a place where um, the, the the socially unacceptable as well as the socially acceptable views on all issues were able to be aired, whatever that may be in, in a given case. Um, um, often the universities are kind of, uh, what's the word, a, a test case because it's often where... Ex- Dream views are held very passionately. And it's been said that the concern increasingly at universities has been more concerned with people avoiding harm and protect people from harm rather than seeking for truth. Do you feel that tension in the way your university or universities go in terms of facing liberalism? Um, no, I don't. Um, uh, I don't accept that at all. Right. I mean, I think one of the... Um, uh, 
uh, I start with that assumption that the university is a forum for debate and not a participant in um, in, in debate. But the university ought also to be, um, to some extent, uh, and I use this with some caution, but a bit of a referee, um, uh, a referee in the ex- to the extent that it ought to be um, teaching the um, epistemic toolkit. That is, it ought to be um, teaching its students to and encouraging its staff to um, uh, 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 ask the right, ask questions, to um, mount good arguments, to look for evidence, to um, uh, all the rest of it. it. It needs to be working on the epistemic toolkit, but it also needs to be working on the epistemic virtues. Um, that is, it's really important how the conversation is conducted, and um, it, it it needs to be promoting epistemic humility. You know, I advance this argument, but I might be wrong. Um, it needs to be encouraging people to listen to one another. It needs to be encouraging people to choose language commensurate with the goal of increasing understanding. It needs to be encouraging people not to make enemies of one another, and um, in in to, in that, to that extent, I think the university does have a job in teaching young people how to and encouraging staff to disagree well, um, because I don't think that being a theatre for the exercise of the independence of the mind um, means that uh, almost anything goes. Um, I think, on the contrary, it means that you should have a shared commitment to increasing understanding, and that involves both the good, the use of good epistemic tools and a commitment to the epistemic virtues. So that you're not in favour of the... Can- the I mean, I hear the phrase, it's a, it's a shorthand phrase, cancel culture, the notion that things can't be talked about because they may be morally unacceptable. The, often, um, the, no. image, the, the image you hear sometimes, and maybe because of the only thing that gets on television is not, not the learned lecture and discussion in the common room, but students exercising their raucous statements like I did when I was at university, by the way, on, on, on all kinds of points of view. But you're saying no no to the whole notion of the university as a place of, uh, of cancel culture or snowflakes. I've heard this thing, this critique made. Yeah. Um, so, no, I don't think that there should be cancel culture. Um, no, uh, I don't think that the university uh, uh, ought to be a place of snowflakes and I'll come back there. But I think that's um, highly charged political rhetoric that's not my experience of the reality of life at my university, um, and it's not. Uh, it, 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 it's my understanding that it's not what Australian universities are like. Um, but you know, there's been um, there's been a lot of nonsense talked about in um, this space. So uh, I've read commentators who've gone on and on, for example, about so-called trigger warnings and how terrible this is and how it's molly coddling people and how it's um, all the rest of it um but to me a lot of that just seems like basic human decency and politeness if we're about to discuss something in class that um some people might find incredibly traumatic you know for example if we're about to um uh discuss domestic violence in great detail when we know domestic violence is a part of the experience of many people in the community. It just seems to me ordinary politeness for a teacher to say at the beginning of the class, look, some of the stuff we're going to be dealing with today is kind of emotionally tough. If any of you have got any difficulties with it, um, you should talk to somebody at the university counselling service. Um, Now, I, I, I don't see that as snowflake culture. I see that as just human decency. There you are. There has been work done on the American universities, which has particularly drawn to just some issues of resilience, but you don't think that's a problem in our universities in, in Australia? No, and I think um, no. Australians, we're, we're funny people, Australia. We are uh, fiercely proud of the fact that we're not American and um, we're not British, and yet we import um, so much from um, uh, Britain and America and assume um, so much in particular that might be said to be true of North American cultural institutions is um, equally true of Australian cultural institutions without really understanding much about the local context. Yes, indeed. I'm Rob Forsyth. This is Liberalism in Question. My guest 
discussing liberalism and some of the challenges, particularly at the university scene, is Dr. Michael Spence, Vice Chancellor at the University of Sydney. Now, Michael, in your in your time, you've been involved in leadership at Sydney for eight years, Danny, like that? and twelve years. Well, my goodness me, and and overseas also in, in other work. Have you seen changes? Uh, what change have you seen in in I guess both the university as a place of liberal thought and its society around it in that time? Can, can you have, you have you seen changes going on around you that have made things easier or more difficult? So I have seen changes that have made things more difficult. Um, I I think social media has made a huge had a huge impact, um, and I think that it has um, had an impact in that um, on, on the practice of the epistemic virtues, um, the the language of um, the web is brief and hyperbolic and often highly inflammatory. Um, and while that's not the language of the learned seminar, it can very easily become the language of the student argument. Um, and I think, and um, and this is not a phenomenon of either the left or the right. It's a phenomenon of both the left and the right. Um, and uh, in in that kind of conversation, one marked by um, the great grab, the hyperbolic um, uh, claim, the um, slogan, um, facts can be the first casualty and a careful and nuanced evaluation of the facts um, can be a bit of a casualty. And I think um, not so much in our academic work, stricter sensor, you know, the kind of stuff that happens in um uh, in, in in seminars and in academic papers, but in the kinds of conversations that go on right. um, on the campus, uh, just as in the community at large, um, those uh, uh, those pressures can be felt. Indeed, um, there is a danger, I think, here. What I call the parochialism of the present. We think things are worse or better to worse than today. Um, when I was a student at the University of Sydney, in my no, sorry, a chaplain in, in my previous life. We put up some rather provocative posters and a rather angry member of the student union staff told me that someone had been, what was it, accosted or assaulted by a poster. I thought, this, this was way back in the 19, early 80s. I thought, no, come on, get over it. I suspect that kind of a slightly over, overrated um, way of subverting discussion is not new today. It certainly was, wasn't new then either. No, and, you know, I, 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 again, it's it's it's... Um, it's kind of interesting, Rob, because it's the uh, it it's the question of um, how you choose language that is commensurate with the goal of increasing understanding, and um, how you try and not to make an enemy of the other, how you try to identify those issues on which there are genuine points of disagreement, and sometimes that's all a bit earnest. And it's not nearly as fun as the kind of um, glib slogan, but it's, it's, it, it's probably in the long run going to be more useful to us, at least in a university context. Do you see any dangers in the future? Do you have any anxieties about the role of university being in your vision of an engine for, liberal, for liberalism in the society? Many, many, yes, do you see a danger or, or are you fairly sanguine about the future of the university in Australia? Um, I, I, I'm pretty sanguine about the future of the university in Australia. You know, the, um, uh, anybody who's ever tried to run a university will tell you that it's almost impossible to tell an academic what to do. And the notion that um, uh, somehow people are going to be silenced or that, um, uh, uh, you know, free speech or academic freedom might be under threat, um, I just find it implausible. Now, as I said at the beginning of this interview, um, I, I don't think our liberal freedoms are things that can ever be taken for granted. Um, and uh, I think they are things to be um, argued about and protected. Um, but one of the things that I've been encouraged about during my time at Sydney is that um, uh, both in the left and the right are continually trying to claim that free speech is in one way or another under threat. And so 
um, I figure we must be doing something all right. I wonder whether liberalism as a philosophy now, not just as a, as a fact, uh, seems to have less vocal supporters, um, less people speaking up for it. Um, the, the, the standard of debate, on the, uh, it seems to me, Tim, Tim Wilson in his recent book says it has very few people in its corner at the moment. Um, do you have any comments about, about that? No, I mean, I, um, so I'm not a political philosopher, no. but um, I do, uh, I think it has many people in its corner. Um, I think it has many people in its corner, um, both as a matter of um, uh, theory, um, but also as a matter of practice. Okay. Now, I, I don't want to get into discussion about con controversies about foreign students, but one of the issues of university like Sydney is that you have cross-cultural engagement, that you have people in your university growing up students in very different societies, connected to very different societies. I'd be interested, how many reflections upon people coming from what I suspect not liberal societies, I may be wrong in that assumption, how they find the challenge of operating in a liberal, a little microcosm of a liberal society. Have you seen have you seen that issue? Yes. So I think there are a couple of things there. Um, so we have students from um, on the campus of the university from 140 countries. So we have students from um, almost every um, uh, 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 um, almost every type of political system there is. Um, I, I should also say that. In that spectrum of 140 different societies, um, almost all of them in one way or another have ways of dealing with disagreement and dissent um, that are um, uh, more and less open, more and less um, liberal. So um, the, the notion that our students who come from um, societies that um, might be regarded as less liberal, um, come unable to formulate or express their own opinions um, is certainly not my experience. Um, and uh, those students um, come, they argue passionately um, like the rest of them. Um, they are um, interested in... Um, in 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 um, uh, in ideas just as much as um, as as our domestic Australian students, in fact, sometimes more so. So, um, in practical terms, that doesn't that's not a problem. I was thinking not so much as not being able to argue, but being comfortable in a kind of open society where things can be argued. Although, I wonder too whether, in fact, university students belong to a certain intellectual or quasi intellectual class that has an international shape to it as well, that there's something more in common about university students across the world, despite the 140 different countries, that might make them a lot the same as well as different compared to some yeah. other people in their culture. Um, so so, so they, that may be plausible, but certainly um, uh, for, us, um, for us, I don't think it's an issue. I mean, one of the things that... Um, uh, 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 one of the things that often amuses me in this space is um, are the um, assumptions made um, in um, uh, uh, some of the public conversation. So, um, for for example, I've, um, uh, I've, I've, I've read in our newspapers um, in one way or another the implication that a, um, a student from, um, let's say, um, you know, China who expresses the um, uh, defends the Chinese um, uh, uh, government's position on, you know, uh, let's say Tibet, um, must be either, um, uh, uh, you know, somehow frightened of their government or um, uh, must be, you know, somehow parroting the view of the <laughs> Chinese government. In fact, they're, um, uh, uh, they're passionate nationalists who actually believe that the Chinese government's claim in relation to Tibet yes. is fully justified and can 
um, mount that case um, articulately and um, effectively. Um, and <laughs> what the right-wing newspapers don't like is that they disagree. Well, I thought disagreement was all about what, liber what liberalism was all about. And what we encourage um, our students to do on campus is to express their opinions and to learn to be comfortable when their opinions are challenged and to argue and just and defend them as you know um, um many of our in this case patriotic chinese students do yes i can see that just because someone's holds a completely different view doesn't mean they're not, they're not sincere in it or to do is mr simply puppets of their government even if one finds the government's views unacceptable yes um, moving back from university even a little if bit. one disagrees with their government's view i think that yes. i think that's that that that's the, that's the great irony of the current political moment. I live liberalism. I live a univ I live a life where almost every view on almost every issue is expressed, and both liberalism's defenders and dis and detractors are actually in practice uncomfortable with that. Both of them would like both um, the Australian political communities of the left or right and right would like me to do a little bit of censorship. But just make sure it's the right people we're censoring. Well, guess what? We're not. So, you, by saying that, you're suggesting, in fact, that the the true liberalism, as you see it, of a university is not a is not an easy thing to achieve. You actually this requires real effort, not to be pushed into an ideological view. It requires real effort, um, and it requires real effort on behalf. Um, I I, uh, I have um, uh, in my time at the university. Uh, and, and, and had to defend um, people's right to argue um, positions that I myself hold find simply extraordinary. Um, and that's what I ought to do because my job is to provide a good forum for debate um, and to provide a good forum for debate where um, the epistemic... The, uh, 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 where the epistemic toolkit is taught and where... Um, the epistemic virtues are on the whole respected. Not an easy job. <laughs> no, it's not. One, one to be critical. They're very fun. Well, thank you very much. I'm Just repeat your thing about Dworkin's comment about the university. I'd like to hear that again. So he, he calls um, the university a theatre for the exercise of the independence of the mind. He says the university is a central liberal institution because um, it is in communities like universities that people acquire the skills that they need to take into the into the political community more generally. Right, and you regard yourself, protect yourself both within the university and also forces outside, both in Australia and no doubt some of the countries these, poor, these students come from, making it much harder for you to maintain that theatre for the independence of the mind. Okay. Michael Spence, thank you very much for joining us. I, I know you're going to a new job in 2021 with different cultural, well, different, different world, but I suspect many of the same cultural challenges. Many of the same cultural challenges. Indeed. Thank you very much. This has been another podcast of Liberalism in Question from the Centre for Independent Studies. For decades, the CIS has been the independent voice working to deliver evidence-based policy within a classical liberal framework. We rely solely on the generosity of people like you for donations to advance our cause Check out the links on the website to see how you can get involved. I'm Rob Forsyth. Thank you for listening.